Welcome to 18367, a graduate class in the math department at MIT on waves and imaging for the fall of 2017. This is a screencast that I do to replace the first lecture that I'm unable to give on September 7th. I'm hoping to go over some of the syllabus for this class as well as the logistics in this video. Uh, my name is Laurent Demanet. This is my office. My office hours are going to be, I'm hoping, on Wednesdays from 2 to 4. This is the link to the class website. I'll also post a link in the description of the video. And uh, the references, there will not be a textbook for this class, but there will be notes that are already online on the website that uh, will probably get updated uh, throughout the semester. There will be links to other references as uh, relevant, but it's really mostly going to be the notes. For the prerequisites, everything that I list here is at the undergraduate level. So we have some exposure to uh, partial differential equations. Now we have Fourier series and Fourier transforms, uh, know what a Dirac delta is, so that's distributions, uh, know how to work with matrices and vectors, and more generally linear algebra, and then finally physics of waves the, at the undergrad level. So if you're not 100% familiar with all the topics that I list here, that's fine, but be ready to brush up on them rather quickly because this is the level that we assume uh, for the beginning of the notes. For the evaluation, we'll have homework and we'll have uh, one project. The homework problem sets are already in the notes and I'll assign a, a given volume in every assignment and it's up to you to uh, choose whichever uh, questions you want to solve. There will be recommended exercises uh, but uh, it's up to you to, to work on whatever you want for that. Uh, then the project will be of your choosing. Submit an idea to me by early October. So this is a discussion between us. It uh, can be related to your research or not. It can be computational or theoretical. It can also be a presentation of a landmark paper from the literature. So this gives you a good excuse to maybe have a conversation with your advisor as to what the really good papers are. And this could be something you do in the scope of your project here. Really, the emphasis is on the presentation and a short report at the end of the semester. The presentations are going to take place on December 7th and 12th for everyone. And the report should be on the order of five pages typeset. Um, try to do good jobs with the figures and the bibliography. The, really the emphasis is on the presentation aspect here. Uh, please register for this class even if you are a listener. So now for the topics, what is this class about? It uh, covers the mathematics that is common to the remote sensing imaging modalities such as radar and seismic imaging. You'll also hear examples coming from sonar and ultrasound. Uh, it turns out that, that the wave equation background behind all these uh, modalities is the same. This is what the class hopes to cover. Um, we'll learn how to uh, formulate these problems and, and solve them using optimization. And uh, in every case, the question is always to image a scene in which the waves scatter. So let me give you a feel for what that means with radar and with seismic. So let's start with radar. Uh, what you uh, can have in mind here is that you have a flight path for a platform such as an aircraft or a satellite and then there's an antenna on board that platform that I'm going to represent with this star here and the goal is to image maybe scatterers either on the ground or not that are going to reflect waves and so you're going to have waves that are going to be emitted by this antenna are going to reach those scatterers and those waves uh, originate in all directions but they hit those scatterers uh, then the echoes generated from those reflections are heard back by the same antenna that serves as a, as a receiver. And so you'll have waves reflected back by those scatterers. And from that information, you'd like to know where the reflections took place and with what intensity. Now, maybe in this instance, one pulse is not enough. Uh, but if you go ahead and wait a little while and repeat this experiment with another pulse, maybe you'll have enough information to locate uh, two scatterers. And then the geometry becomes this. Uh, and more generally, you'll have a set of those and you'd like to image the scene. So let me um, show you uh, what the solution of the wave equation looks like uh, here in uh, this situation. The red dot at the top of uh, the image here is going to be this moving antenna. So here, this red dot here, it emits the waves, those spherically expanding waves. And as you can see, they're going to hit two scatterers that are around here and, and over there. And so what you do is you listen to the echoes of those waves as they reach back the antenna and use that as data to then uh, try to infer where, where the scatterers are and form an image of where they may be. But this is the physics of wave reflection about the two scatterers. So the incident wave, and then it gets turned into a scattered wave or reflected wave. So that's the radar setup. 
Uh, this is a 2D simulation, but of course, nature is three dimensional. Now, uh, may maybe let's also go over the seismic case, uh, which is not exactly the same, but involves the same kind of wave propagation. Now, what you have is, let's say you have an earthquake. You have the, let's say the top of the earth here, you have an earthquake that's set off at some depth at some location and then you'd like to be able to leverage the, the waves generated by this earthquake in order to do imaging of the subsurface to know what the different layers would be in the subsurface. It's going to be a very similar situation where you would have waves generated from this event here that are going to reflect off of here these uh, hydrogen 80s, these contrast in the physical parameters so you can expect waves that are going to be generated by that and then those are going to be recorded and now where the waves are going to be recorded is not going to be located at the same location. Maybe you have seismometers here at the surface of the Earth. And now this is going to be the, the data that you use to try and generate a map of the subsurface from these scattered waves. And so maybe we can also take a look at the wave simulation in this case in the seismic setup. So quite similar a situation you have at first a spherically expanding wave, but then it hits the reflectors, it hits the features, creates reflections creates echoes you listen to these echoes and that's what creates the um, creates the data and so let's uh, maybe take a look at it one more time you see the, the red dot here doesn't move because that's the source it's fixed uh, for let's say an earthquake or a man-made source and all the all the red ticks that you see at the top of the image here are all the receivers and so you assume that you have data for all of those and the question becomes that of forming an image of the subsurface so that's for radar and for seismic so as far as the math of this is concerned in in both cases you have to some level of approximation a wave equation that underlies and describes the uh, the, the disturbance in 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 uh, the domain and so here we'll write this as some model as a function of location x x is two or three dimensional here x on the line and then you'll have a field u the wave equation will have d2u by dt squared this is a function of space and time and then you write the wave equation minus the laplacian of u and that's going to be equal to a right hand side that encodes the source so it's going to be f of x and t for the source when does it happen where does it happen there's going to be one uh, one index per source s and so we'll index the right hand side here and the field by this letter s so this is what's going to govern wave propagation the waves are going to be the solution u sub s of this equation here the function of um, space and time and so u would be in the electromagnetic case would be uh, let's say components of the electric or magnetic fields and in the in the uh, elastic case would be would be the components of the uh, particle displacement inside the earth in the acoustic case those would be pressure disturbances in the atmosphere and so forth um, now uh, in this equation here m of x has a physical interpretation it's it's a m for model but it's really uh, one over c square of x where uh, c is the local uh, speed of wave propagation in the medium and so the data would uh, typically be samples of the solution of this equation here would be the u sub s at specific locations x sub r and time in other words you don't know the whole solution of this partial differential equation you only have samples of it the model what you're looking for is this function m of x that we talked about now if you go from the model to the data you simulate the partial differential equation you solve it that's called a direct problem and now the inverse problem of interest is to go from u sub s to m of x so how can that work how can we find parameters of a partial differential equation if we know uh, some features of its solutions that's the inverse problem of imaging and this is what is going to keep us busy for the entire semester Okay, so now let's go over the outline uh, for different topics that we'll go over in this class. So chapter one will cover uh, most of the things we need to know about wave equations, acoustic, elastic, electromagnetic. We'll see some elementary solutions to those, uh, such as traveling waves, reflected waves, um, plane waves, and so forth. We'll see what characteristic curves and surfaces are and what that has to do with dispersion relations. We'll see a special case of solutions, the spherically expanding ones that we've already kind of alluded to that are called Green's functions. And we'll talk about conservation of energy, how to prove it, and what how useful that is. And then we'll uh, uh, maybe uh, I can here in the left uh, 
tell you that in terms of inverse problems, what this will allow us to do in the AX equals B language is to pose the inverse problem as a relationship A of X equals B in quotes, where you have B and you'd like to have X, but it's a nonlinear relationship, we'll see why. And so you have some A of X equals B that we'll be able to get to via this chapter one here and fully specify. Now we'll jump to chapter three, where now the goal of chapter three is to do so-called scattering series or Born series, which will allow us, morally speaking, to take this A of X equals B and turn it into something linear, AX equals B plus leftover. And uh, by gathering all those terms in the leftover, we'll have what's called lippmann schringer uh, integral equation, and we'll see how to invert those, uh, those types of relations. Um, we'll also see, try to understand the accuracy of this Born approximation that consists in passing to a linear system, um, which is the first step that everyone does in, in, in doing imaging. Chapter four will be about the adjoint state method. Uh, this is an important tool that we have to handle imaging problems because if you look at this AX equals B that we had here, inverting A is extremely difficult. However, uh, there is a good substitute for it in A star, it turns out. And so this chapter four here will go over the construction, uh, the computationally advantageous construction of this A star of this adjoint. And that's why it's called the adjoint state method. It will give rise to what's called the imaging condition, which is the simplest way to form an image. And that uh, then takes on a variety of names depending on the setting. Migration is what the word you use in seismic imaging. Back projection is the word you use in synthetic aperture radar, for instance. Um, we'll see how that is used to compute the gradient in a gradient descent formulation for an optimization problem that attempts to solve the whole thing. And we'll see how to interpret this adjoint state method with Lagrange multipliers. And then in chapter five, we'll uh, delve into the details of what makes uh, radar special, in particular synthetic aperture radar imaging. Uh, we'll see what happens in the far field approximation, how the same kind of math allows us to access the so-called Doppler effect uh, when uh, the sources or, or, or the receivers move. Uh, we'll see how to turn back projection into filtered back projection to have an accurate image. And we'll see what it has to do with image resolution, what kind of resolution we can get out of filtered back projection, uh, which is accessible in the context of radar imaging. And then this is a good time for us to take a quick um, uh, detour in chapter six uh, through computerized tomography, because this is the right time to introduce mathematically the radon and x-ray transforms uh, behind CT. CT is used in CAT scans in medical imaging, so they're not physically directly related to radar and seismic, but mathematically they are. So it's a very good opportunity for us to, you know, take, take a lecture or two uh, to, to cover CT. And which mathematically is really cool too. What is a radon transform and how to invert it? You know, integration along the lines. Then in chapter seven, uh, we'll move on to seismic imaging and FWI for full waveform inversion. Uh, this, uh, this setting is a little more complicated than before because now we have waves that propagate in a heterogeneous medium. And that's why we skipped chapter two uh, here at the beginning. I didn't list it here because this is where we're going to cover it. We're going to cover it in the scope of seismic imaging. This is where we need it. This is geometrical optics or how do we mathematically treat the fact that the rays are not straight in uh, the wave equations of, uh, of uh, elastic seismic imaging. This will give rise to, because those rays are not straight, it will give us give rise to the notion of generalized radon transforms. And then we'll see some uh, specific topics that are proper to seismic imaging, such as model extension and velocity analysis. And then chapter eight will be of a, of a more mathematical nature. We'll cover the micro-local analysis of imaging, as in is the sense in which uh, the relationship I wrote uh, above is true. In what sense is it that the adjoint is uh, approximately the inverse? It's not in a pointwise sense. It's really in the sense that A star A uh, does not move singularities around. And so that requires a new kind of mathematics called micro-local analysis. And we'll, we'll go over that toward the end of the semester. And then as time permits, we'll also covers some topics that are important for optimization, such as uh, choice of algorithms, regularization, uh, sparse regularization, so L1 minimization, um, as well as more modern methods such as compressed sensing and source encoding that have to do with random projections or stochastic gradient descent. So we'll go ahead and see uh, what uh, you, the audience, are interested in hearing toward the end of the semester, but I'd like to carve some time out for some optimization topics here that are of uh, contemporary relevance. Finally, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email those to me or leave those as uh, comments uh, under the video. And if you know people who would like to uh, take this class or are wondering about it, don't hesitate to forward the link to this video or tell them to contact me so we can go ahead and build the email list 
um, I realize that I won't be able to email everyone about this uh, screencast uh, ahead of time. So thanks in advance for your collaboration for that. And I'll see you then uh, on uh, week number two. Bye-bye.